Hello, I'm Tom Campbell, the author of My Big Toe, and I'd like to explain a little bit about the connection between virtual reality, the double slit experiment, consciousness, and the book My Big Toe. Virtual reality is the newest and biggest thing happening in physics today. Virtual reality does a better job of explaining the results of physics experiments than does the competing uh, idea, which is materialism. It explains quantum mechanics in a way that is more intuitive and logical and rather than a way that is entirely computation based. So virtual reality has some interesting characteristics. And all virtual realities share these same characteristics. So let me use an example, the World of Warcraft. That's a rather old example, but uh, most of you will be familiar with that. World of Warcraft is a virtual reality in a multiplayer game. One of the characters that you can play, one of the avatars, because characters in a virtual reality are called avatars, one of the avatars you can play is an elf. Now, we have a couple of facts about virtual reality. One is that the computer that computes the virtual reality, that computes the World of Warcraft, cannot exist inside the World of Warcraft game. Okay, the computer has to be outside that World of Warcraft reality frame. In other words, the frame where the elf lives can't contain the computer that computes the elf. Okay, that's easy. Now, the elf is just a computation. It just looks like an elf. It's a picture of an elf that moves and does actions. But all of the actions it does are animated by a player. Without a player, the elf doesn't do anything except stand still and wobble a little bit. The player is the elf's consciousness. So just the same as the computer, we can surmise that the consciousness must always be outside of the virtual reality, just like the computer. So the elf is only an avatar, a computed picture. It can't be conscious. Computed pictures aren't conscious. So its consciousness has to be outside of the virtual reality, not created inside of the virtual reality. So now we have two interesting facts about virtual realities. If you are in a virtual reality, then the computer that computes that virtual reality has to be in another reality frame, or you might say in another dimension of reality. It can't be in your virtual reality universe. And the consciousness must also be in the same reality frame as the computer, because the player and the computer are constantly sharing information with each other they have to be in the same reality frame. Another way of saying this is that if this is a virtual reality, our consciousness and the computer that's creating this virtual reality have to be non-physical to this virtual reality. Non-physical to us, us being the avatar, this body. Okay. So that is a rather large statement that our bodies our avatars, our minds, our consciousness, and that our consciousness and the computer computing this virtual reality is non-physical to us. So that's virtual reality in a thumbnail sketch. Now we talk about the double slit experiment. In the double slit experiment, something very interesting happened, something very surprising happened when single particles, and these particles could be photons, in other words, a particle of light, or they could be electrons or hydrogen atoms, or even things much larger, large things like buckyballs that are 60 carbon atoms in size. They look like uh, soccer balls, very much like a soccer ball. These particles are thrown at these two slits. It's a barrier that has two holes cut in it. And the particles, one at a time, are thrown at this barrier with the two holes cut in it. 
And one would expect from classical physics that the particles would go through a hole, one hole or the other, and then hit the backdrop behind whichever hole they went through. So you should have a pile of particles behind hole one and a pile of particles behind hole two. Well, that's not what happens if no one is looking at which slit they go through. So that was the surprise. They threw these particles. Think of, uh, you can think of a machine gun firing bullets at two slits, or think of uh, somebody uh, throwing baseballs at two slits. And what would happen is that these particles, these bullets or baseballs, would arrange themselves on the backdrop in a very unusual distribution. They didn't just pile up behind the slits, but they distributed themselves in what's called a diffraction pattern. A bunch of little peaks where the balls would hit, then a blank space where the balls never hit, and then another peak where they do hit, and so on. It's called an interference fringe. But yet these are just single particles, single bullets or baseballs or whatever you want to throw at these two slits. And there was no reason why they should do that, distribute themselves in this diffraction pattern, but they did. And the reason they did is because this is a virtual reality. You see, once you understand virtual reality, you can understand why that happens. The reason they had to distribute themselves that way is that optical experiments have shown that if you put a lot of particles all at once through two holes, they will distribute themselves in a diffraction pattern. Well, whether there's lots of particles and single particles, they have to act the same way. They cannot act in a different way. There's nothing about the particles being in a crowd that makes them act any differently when they go through the slits. Another surprising thing was that if we look at which slit each particle goes through, they no longer distribute themselves in a diffraction pattern. If we look at which slit the particle goes through, they just pile up behind each slit, just like you would expect. So the difference between whether they act like a classical particle or whether they act like a wave, even though they're all just single particles, the difference is whether or not we have the information of which slit they went through. So if we know they went through a particular slit, then they act like a particle. If we don't know what slit they go through, they act like a wave. Virtual reality works based on probability distributions. There's a probability distribution uh, for either case. And when that particle gets to, this, gets to the backdrop where it's being collected, a random draw is taken from a probability of the possibilities, and that's what appears on the screen. That is a, a simple way of understanding the double slit experiment. Now the only way to understand it is to assume, for no particular good reason other than it works, that the particles are not really particles, but they're probability distributions, and then compute the probability of that particle landing in any particular place. That's how quantum mechanics does it. But quantum mechanics has no idea why that assumption should be a good assumption. So it's a big mystery. In virtual reality, that mystery is removed. Virtual reality is computed from a top-down process in terms of statistics and probability, because that's the most efficient way to compute a virtual reality. Okay, now what does this have to do with MBT and consciousness? Well, MBT is really a theory of consciousness that realized after it was published that it did better physics, that the same, the same ideas, the same theory that lets one understand consciousness also helps one understand physics more succinctly and better. And the virtual reality viewpoint solves a lot of the the paradoxes in physics, things that the physicists just don't know why it's like that. Like, why should particles be probability distributions? Why should the speed of light be a constant? You know, lots of these paradoxes 
in physics are solvable very easily and very logically from a virtual reality viewpoint. It turns out that when you look at the theory of consciousness, as MBT did, that consciousness is itself an information system. It is a digital information system. Everything that you're aware of in your consciousness is just information. It's just a system that deals with the information here from your five senses. That is what defines your reality. Now, we are all played by players. Our consciousness is our player. If when I say our, I mean our body, then this body is animated by a consciousness. If there was no consciousness, the body would just lie there and do nothing, just like the elf if there was no player. If you are unconscious, you just lie there and do nothing. You're not animated. The consciousness is what animates you. Each of us has a player that is our consciousness playing this avatar in this virtual reality, which means there's lots of what I call individuated units of consciousness. Every one of us is one of those. Each of us are animated by our very own individuated unit of consciousness. So consciousness forms a social system, just as we here have a social system on this planet. And it's not only the people, but all the conscious critters, the dogs, the cats, the horses, and the bumblebees, and all the other things that are conscious, all form an interactive social system. Now, consciousness, being an information system, evolves by creating more information, by lowering its entropy, by being more constructive, by being more productive. And it does that with a large number of consciousness by cooperation. In a social system, cooperation lowers entropy. Cooperation builds and constructs. So that path, that side that's cooperative and caring about each other, I call that the love side. The side that is non-trusting, non-caring, and only interested in self, that I call the fear side. These are the two opposites. This is the good versus evil, if you will, uh, that kind of dominates our culture. So we have consciousness, that is an information system. We have our individuated unit of consciousness that is part of that information system. And with this idea of a virtual reality where we have computed avatars that allow consciousness to experience experience in a way that has feedback and has consequences. That's why we're in this particular game. The purpose is to grow up, to learn to love, care, and be cooperative. That's why we're here, because as we do that, we evolve the quality of our consciousness. As we are consumed by fear, by greed, by self-centeredness, we de-evolve. Consciousness is an evolving system. So that's the relationship between virtual reality, my big toe, theory of consciousness, and the double slit experiment. All of those tie up together.